New Breed of Beast, Vlog 2. Bonsoir everyone. This is the second vlog of um, New Breed of Beast. And uh, just bringing you all up to date on what's been going on with the project. Um, not much, unfortunately, to report this week. Um, it's just it's been a hectic week and um, haven't really got much done. I've been thinking more of the... Um, concept of the album um, you know exactly what sound it's going to take yeah I put up that the genre of the project is going to be a mixture between like indie rock but I mean indie rock in the proper sense of the word as in independent rock which is a bit misleading what I mean is it's not like mainstream it's going to be it's going to be different. It's not what you're used to hearing, type of thing. So indie rock, electronica, because uh, it all starts actually. It all starts here on this keyboard, and I make various loops on it. Um, actually, I've been working on some more parts for the uh, for Mr. Monkey. So I'll just play a bit here. Next bit of a rhythm section, um, and it's important because uh, oh, I'll tell you in a second anyway. So anyway, they start on here, and uh, they're done by computer. So the process is electronic, and um, some of the sounds, uh, you know, I have synths on it and all the rest of it. So it is um, slightly electronic as well. Um, as indie rock and electronica. And the last one is Afrobeat, and I am determined to use Afrobeat um, on this album because I love it so much. Just that kind of tribal rhythm that you just don't get in any other music. Um, now it's said Afrobeat is supposed to be the sound of 2010, so they say, but then they say this thing every year. Such and such is going to be the sound of this year. 2009, okay, I'll give them that. 2009 was supposed to be the year of the female electro pop star, and it was. I mean, you had Katy Perry, who didn't last long before she was blown out of the water by Lady Gaga, um, who has dominated the world and holds us all in her very weird grip. Um, and then you have LaRue. You have, uh, oh, that new one, Pixie Lot. Um, then you have, oh, there's loads of them. There's loads of them. Then I go on to create a whole new hater base by dissing Lady Gaga. But anyway, 2010 is supposed to be the year of Afrobeat, and I don't care, okay? I've liked Afrobeat long before they started saying that. So I'm putting Afrobeat into my music. I'm listening to an album at the moment called Solid Air by a Scottish, I think, folk singer-songwriter called John Martin. And this album, I'll put a picture up, is uh, incredible. It, it really is. I'm using John Martin's Solid Air as a touchstone for my writing because it's uh, just a fantastic example of a tour de force in songwriting that really strips the songs back to their bare bones and lets the power of the structure and uh, the arrangement, the simple arrangement and the lyrics speak for itself and um, that's something that I really want to achieve with this record. So I'm using that, the other thing I'm using as a touchstone in my songwriting is Paul Simon. I mean, he's just, he's one of the great songwriters of the last 50 years, I think. Um, and everything he's done, from uh, his time with Art Garfunkel, Simon and Garfunkel, you know, you have the Boxer Bridge Over Troubled Waters, Mrs. Robinson, the list goes on and on and on. They're just really, really good songs. Um, and then obviously his solo stuff, Graceland, which is one of the best albums of the history of ever in rock and pop music. And um, also his most recent album, which a lot of people don't know about. It's actually called Surprise and it's produced by Brian Eno. Then I take a long time to say simply that Surprise shows us that 
Guess what? Paul Simon's as good now as he was in his heyday. Of course he is. Man's a god for goodness sake. Can't do anything wrong. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's something else, it really is. So, Paul Simon's surprise and John Martin's Solid Air. Really recommend those two albums. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much to tell you about my um, about my project at the moment. One thing I am trying to do actually is I'm trying to uh, be able to play the songs on guitar alone, you know, guitar and vocals, so that I can bring them around and uh, show people before the album's actually done. Um, and I have an idea for another song. No vocals have been written. It's just a very simple. Uh, kind of sliding guitar, not slide guitar as in with a bottleneck, but sliding guitar um, pattern, and hopefully that will be turned into a song. But at the moment I'm focusing on Mr. Monkey because I've done this before, I've started one song and I've kind of left it to the side and then I've started on another one, and I've come back to the first one and finished it in a hurry, and it hasn't sounded as good as it might have. So I'm concentrating on Mr. Monkey, um, I played you the rhythm before. Um, I just added little bits and pieces. It's not mixed, um, not mixed properly, and all the rest of it. But it sounds like this. It's the verse. Like that. And um, there the accompanying bits. I have a couple of brass on there. I have the whole Afro beat thing you could hear. I have a little uh, tinkly bit of electric piano. Um, the piano from the, um, you know, the original uh, loops of the song, which I just brought in as a touchstone, and then just uh, a synth bass on there as well. Some of these will be used, some of these won't. That's the way it is. You know, you lump stuff together, and the amount that actually gets used is uh, tiny, which is the way it should be. So I will um, talk to you all soon anyway. And thanks for bearing with me this week. Hopefully I'll have something better to show you next week. So, um, adieu to one and all. Well, it pains me to say, but there's a monkey hanging off of my back. He keeps looking at me, saying, why aren't you at the river yet? He keeps dragging up my heels, trying to get me to go to the water. What makes you think, Mr. Monkey, that I wanna go and get wet?